Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm Samantha McMillan. I'm the Commercial Director for Drama in ITV Studios UK. Thank you for turning up for Nordic Drama, Is It at a Crossroads? We were going to spend the next 45 minutes discussing that, but we're going to do it slightly down to 40 minutes because Michaela Cole's interview is happening up on the third floor and we all, as well as yourselves, want to, we'd, we'd like to see it. Um, before I introduce the panel, which I'm very grateful who have joined us today, I think it's a real testament to Nordic drama that after 42 years of the festival, we're actually sitting here having a panel about this. It's the writing, the characterization, it's the visual style that Nordic drama has brought to us that this phenomena, when we ask, is it as a crossroads, is it dead? I think not, but we'll find out over the next 40 minutes. So to introduce the panel, I have Anna Kroeman. She is head of drama for Sweden's public broadcaster, SBT. Um, I, not to make assumptions about who's in the audience, did ask everyone to bring a clip or a trailer for each channel, just so you have a flavour of what everybody is doing over in the Nordic shores. I think we'll go straight to SVT's trailer, um, and then I'll introduce the rest of the panel. That is how it's done. <laughs> Vila, um, Vila Vilan is got a very wide remit. Creative director at Vinland's public broadcaster Wire Lee. He is responsible for commissioning drama, culture, music, entertainment, factual, and children across all medias. And interestingly, Vila also oversees Wire Lee's symph symphony orchestra. Um, let's play his VT. <laughs>
Deadwin is part of that trailer which is dropping on Netflix today? Today, yes. Globally? Globally. Again, <laughs> that's how it's done. Um, Benilo Christensen is executive producer at TV2 Denmark. Um, I believe the clip we're about to see is for autumn winter coming up. Want to yes. play the routine? We all need each other because it's when we share our sorrows and joys that we live life to the full. When we're open about our innermost thoughts. Jeg savner dig. Det skulle måske tænke på, inden du kastede dig i kamp med din sekretær. When we're not hiding our excitement. <laughs> or our disappointment. <laughs> when we admit we may have been wrong. Jeg vil ikke sige. When we have the courage to say. Jeg elsker dig. Det er for mig, er det ikke sandt? When we ask other people for help. Jeg har brug for at du hjælper mig med at fælde Tom. Or help other people. When we are being true to who we are and stand by it. Det her der liv. Et liv i frihed. When we smile at the world and it smiles back. What are you waiting for? TV2, all that we share. Er du okay, far? Nej, det er bare lige ryggen til at sætte sig fast. Så har vi set det. And finally, the Scott on the panel. <laughs> the Scott on the panel for Finland. Um, Alicia, this is the Ed Esports service in Finland. And rather than a trailer, we actually have a world exclusive. Do we not, yeah. Helen? We do, yeah. <laughs> the Bullets, your first commission and drama? That's right, yeah. Wonderful. Play the BT. Have you ever lost anyone? My parents. What would you do to get them back? Anything. Madina Taburova, till och kanske väl nätts inte kultus pälla ollu 14 vuoden ajan. Tänä ei ole kuka se väittää olemas. Surus nimi on Mari Saari. Sat sosiaali virkailija. Vanneta sulle meidän tiedot ja sat kerron meille mitä. How did you find me? Miks Taburova on totta itsensä kiinni? Jos se Taburova ei pälä mitään, niin se tappaa sen. Thank you, Mari. What the hell is going on, Medina? She's so close to you. I shouldn't have told you. I need your help. Anything. Don't say anything unless you mean it. I don't want to be a bullet. I'm the one who pulls the trigger. Just before we move on, <coughs> do you have a date that you're dropping? Bullets as yet? Uh, that you can share? Yeah, middle of October. Super. And kind, of, mixing, kind of set. <laughs> okay. And the mixing language, because obviously there's a bit of English there. Yeah, it's probably 60% Finnish. Okay, and 40% English, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, we're going to go back to the key question. Right. Which is Is Nordic drama dead? I absolutely disagree. What do you think? I'm flying to you. It's dead. No. It's dead. <laughs> We can We're all go out. home. Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, I think it's um, 
uh, it's wonderful that we've had the recognition that we've had, and but you can only stay like the flavor of the month for a certain period, and then something else is going to be flavor of the month, and and that's where we are probably now. So of course it's important that we uh, define uh, what we do, but I think we've done different things all along. I mean, it's like saying that the UK drama is just costume drama. Uh, it's not. Um, uh, we just have to make you know create awareness of, of the other things that we do and, and do that brilliantly. Do you agree, Villa? Well, I hope it's not dead because we have just begun as Finns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's many things. Yes. As, as we know, it's many things. Mm. Uh, first of all, Finland is really not part of Scandinavia, as we know. It's part, part of, of Nordics. Nordics. We have a mm. totally different language and historical background is, is different. I hope it shows us in our real. Mm. But Nordic drama is many things and it's uh, going forward from that Nordic Noir label. Mm. It still sells good, Nordic Noir, and it's it's a wonderful thing to have, but, but it's going to be widened up a lot. Yeah. And just staying on the point of um, Scandinavia versus the Nordics, what I'm really conscious of, we are talking about Nordic drama, and it is they are completely separate countries with very particular cultural tastes. And how do you feel about when we use this sweeping statement from the UK that Nordic dr drama, there's Danish drama, there's Finnish drama, there's Swedish drama, there's Atlantic drama. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I think we've always laughed about it, but I think uh, it's it's relevant and it's going to be even more relevant in the future because we're actually going to collaborate a lot more. I mean, we've always done that, but now the, tab the talent ca does also work in, in all different uh, countries uh, and we'll see more of that, I think, and, and real co-productions, um, sort of 50-50 productions. Um, so I think we're okay with it. Yeah. Are you okay with it? Yes, we have opened a yearly collaboration with the Nordic public service companies so mm. we are putting something together and have like 12 dramas uh, co-produced together yearly which is heavy but you set. need to be part of a public broadcaster system to, to participate in that yeah it's, it has started with the could Penilla for example participate in that because obviously grey zone was Swedish Danish 50 50 would you be able to be part of this collaboration well, no, I don't think so. Exactly, no, it is because you, you know you are a commercial yeah, broadcaster. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And going back to to Grey Zone, which obviously mm. you you produced, being fifty fifty. Yes. Traditionally, the model had been that for a Nordic drama to be fully financed, you would do that through pre-sales. So, by the very nature, it was a co-production before co-production became the sexy word that everybody uses now. But that was a 50-50 creative split with TV4 and TV2 coming in. You see more of that happening in your territory? Uh, yes, yes, I do. There were other finances as well. We also had set the AFN and, and, and I might, I might have helped. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, and, and I can see my old team here. You might have helped. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But but uh, uh, TV4 and and us, TV2 Denmark, were in with an equal amount. Yes. And um, yes, we have and we have other co-productions at the moment that we're developing. Yeah. And uh, not that is actually with uh, we have one with um, RT. Uh, at the moment, and we have one that's, I mean, with ZDF that is hopefully also going to uh, see. That. And the background to the Arte, is that French, German, uh, that collaboration? Actually, no, it's, I mean, it's mainly actually in Danish, and then there's some language in English and a little mm. bit in French. Okay. It's not an, um, uh, it hasn't been an, an issue for them that, that the amount of French isn't, isn't that much. Okay. And for you, Alan, is this the same? Are you, I mean, you have a particularly unique business model in as far as you... Is it? Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you partner with a, a Finnish linear broadcaster, but you take first window. Yeah, so we're partnering up, up with, with, with Ule um, on our series that we're doing called Arctic Circle later mm. in the year. Um, and we're partnering up with MTV3 with, um, with um, Bullets. Mm. So, yeah, so we'll come in as the TV on SVOD and then we'll say, can we get a second window some, somewhere to bump up the monies, but that will change because the linear game is changing because the linear channels and now have their own SVOD, TVOD channels, like, like the discussion with the Scandi chat yet the other day, and that will change the market because we're all then battling in the same space. And often they'll want to have their 
service, TVOD asphalt service, to come first rather than to go on the linear channel. Mm. And that means, you know, you might be having a six month to nine month window on your TVOD asphalt and then it goes to their TVOD asphalt, which is difficult. Very difficult. So we'll see how that funding structure works going forward. Um, how, how can we even sustain that? I mean, what it's you, tricky, what but I think VC, VC financing comes into play. Obviously, we're looking for distributors to give us bigger MGs. So, for example, um, with Bullets that was up there, we went to Sky Vision, luckily enough, and Sky Vision gave us a lovely amount of money to help us make the series. And they've, Must they've been. Love Moreba. <laughs> yeah, she looks wonderful. She's been on holiday. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, so I think there's different ways of working the, the model out for people like like ours and, and yeah. talking about what's going on on with the, the Nordics for us it's slightly difficult because f this finished doesn't relate in the same way to the other Nordic uh, languages you know there isn't that same sense exactly. the language is completely different so although there are some pro projects going on particularly your project with White Wall which is a um, Swedish Finnish project it's, it's more difficult to do so we've we're finding we're getting the money from elsewhere but outside of distribution is it even further? Well, just in terms of, you know, there's that whole notion of, of it's easy to go and get pre-sales from, from the Nordic territories because we're the Nordics, but that isn't the case. We, yeah. we haven't found that to be the case. Yeah. We found it actually easier to go elsewhere to get those, those monies rather than to say, oh, well, we'll get the money from Sweden or from, from Norway or from Denmark. That hasn't been the case for us yeah. so far. Okay. okay. Um, most importantly, Nordic drama has always been groundbreaking. How do you continue to do that? Uh, from my perspective, it has all to do with the talent we have and how we work with the talent. Uh, uh, I think um, it's, it, is, uh, it is a privilege of being small sometimes. And I think, uh, I mean, working together in the, in the Nordic region uh, with talent. Uh, I've got Danish writers on a lot of my series. I mean... You know, there's enough work if you if you work throughout the the, the region, um, and you can get really you know good at what you're doing. At the same time, it's it's small and it's easy and it's all built on trust. Um, so I think we work really well together. I think that's that's a. F so, Pina, how do you feel when um, Anna's got Danish writers? She loves that. Yes, <laughs> you know, so, you know, everybody's crossing over. Swedish writers. Yes, as well. so you know, it's, 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 it's ret retaining talent is such a, yeah. a challenge for. Uh, and I think what is really important is, or you can say at least the tradition in Denmark is that we 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 tend to make try to make original stories. Right. Mm. Mm. We do not have a great um, uh, history of of book adaptions. We do it rarely, and and we we. We haven't really succeeded with remakes so far, so it is the original stories, and that also attracts the talent. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's they the key. They have great creative uh, freedom. So, do you shy away in Finland from book adaptations, Fila, or you know, is it more the original story? Because obviously, here in the UK, we 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 do love a piece of IP. It means you know we do love a book adaptation, um, and. We look to yourselves, well, normally to Sweden, to, to even pick up from there. How do you feel in Finland? As I told, I, I hope we find our own tone in Finland, yes. and, and that, that's important. The phrase has been Finnish weird that we've been used. <laughs> Maybe it's seen yes. in the real. Slightly different. <laughs> there's some how do you originality. Find Finnish weird. <laughs> well, but you saw it. Yeah. Weird people yeah. doing weird things, but <laughs> as you know, us Finns are a bit quiet, but honest. Yes. And great people, so... <laughs> and weird. Yeah, so and you weird. also and weird. In in a, in finish a, weird, in Alan, a positive way. from your side? Yeah, in fact, we're, well, having, yeah. we're having a big discussion about finish weird right now because it's, it's, it's true because people think, like you were saying, like the Nordics, it isn't the Nordics. No, and no. Finland is completely different and feels different. And even when you go into the meetings, you, know, you can go into a meeting room, as you well know, and not talk for quite a long time. <laughs> And it's perfectly normal, <laughs> and I quite like it. <laughs> and uh, so you only have to say, you, you, can, you can hide and say nothing and think, look really intelligent, sort of just nod a little bit. <laughs> and um, so in terms of the drama we can make, we, it can feel different, which is good. And talking about a tonality, you know, we can do stuff which is different, which has more space, which has more feeling. And so talking about, um, you know, the cross, you know, Nordic crossroads, I think we are just getting started because there has been some massive hits come out of 
Denmark, for example. Yeah. But you know, where's the next big thing? And when, tra- and when Trapped came out of Iceland, they've got Iceland Trapped. Yeah. And the yeah. people are using, particularly distributors, are using Trapped as a kind of model to go, mm. you know, can Finland be the new kind of Iceland in that mm. sense? Mm. And the same yeah. way as with, with no- Norway when they made no- Nobel, um, the great series. So we're hoping, I'm sure you are as well, that we have a big kind of splash that comes out of Finland. And people say, oh, this is cool. What's this? This is mm. this is different because it is different. Like, you know, we're shooting Arctic Circle this year, which is up in Ivalo, which is you know the middle of um, nowhere. A hundred days filming up in up in the snow, and it will feel and look different. The, the light's different. Um, you know, there's a, there's a really there's a real sense of being somewhere unusual. And was that a Finnish writer? Like, is that Finnish writer? The team, yeah, yeah, it's with Yellow Film and and Ule are taking the, the the second window on it. Yeah. So the nurturing of your local talents, particularly important. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. For in, in Finland in particular. Yeah, our company has put a lot of money into the writing. A couple of year, years ago, we doubled our budgets to writing. As we know, everything doesn't come up with the series, but, mm. but there are more writers in Finland right now, and, and they can have a salary of just writing, and, and that's a good example. Of and that's come from yourselves. That's, that's extraordinary. Yes, yes. Um, I know last year there was a, an announcement of you starting a writer's lab. And yeah. yeah. How is that going? And kind of can, just, uh, for, just for the group. That wasn't really because I, I thought we didn't have any writers, but I thought I needed... Um, I, I could see that not, not only because people were going away to the US and work, but that when the s uh, came on board, uh, like the, the local, like Via Play, uh, a lot of good writers got stuck in projects and were away for long times. Um, so I did. A, I'm doing a workshop right now that is called Talent Talent Development for Grown Ups, uh, which is in, for grown ups. For grown ups. Okay. So it's not like new talent. It's new talent for television, but it's not new talent coming straight from film schools. It's uh, very established uh, writers and and uh, playwrights and journalists um, who really has a career of their own uh, doing like a year of a crash course in writing for television. Uh, I don't know how it's going to come out. I'm super happy if just these 12 people that were sort of picked for this um, have an idea of what to do with ideas they have that could be, a, you know, become a television series. I, not necessarily they have to write television themselves, but mm. they would understand what uh, a series uh, actually needs to, to be a series rather than a book or a feature film or, you know. Pino, what are you doing at TV2 to kind of nurture that talent and, again, kind of safeguard? Because, as well, I understand it, sometimes in the UK we steal your writers. Shocking, I know. You steal our writers and our actors and yes. our directors. And they, yeah. <laughs> Photographers. We're going to borrow and give them yeah. back. But some of them come back again, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of them actually come back. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, we've, we've been working a lot with the new talent in the sense of the film school. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, where uh, our um, head of drama, she actually, together with um, uh, Maya Ilsu, a very uh, talented uh, writer, they they scheduled a whole semester for for the um, writers and the producers, a TV uh, semester, and um, and trying to connect uh, with with people in in the business. So so there is a, a really good dialogue. And are they able to come onto your shows? I mean, is there a, a path at some point, or is it kind of? We we also we have hope. like a three week uh, a three week uh, course where they where the writers for some of the show work with with the new writers and they 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 write an episode for example and the oh, wow. main writers then kind of giving them uh, feedback and notes on it. Uh, so in that sense, we try to hook up. Oops. Um, we have a good collaboration with the Finnish production companies and our in-house pro- producers with uh, youth drama. As we yes. know, Scam from Norway was a really Huge big hit. hit. Yes. And, and we have like four series coming up uh, on, on the youth market, like 15 to 30. Uh, actual real, and real drama. The and the writers that, are young. And is, the writers that are your, young. is that for your SVOD, for your VAD? It's mostly no? for our SVOD. Of okay. course, we show it on TV too, but yes. in broadcasting, but it's made for SVOD. And how are you financing those dramas are they fully financed by they yourself? are quite fully financed by us but but there's a nice movement with them also yeah, yeah. is that um, a finance plan comparable to a 
not a young drama, a, a older skewing drama, or is it a much reduced budget plan? Yeah, as as a plan, so you have to be creative these days, as we know. We are cooperating with the operators, mm. with Netflix, yes, with SVT, and stuff like that. And our our newest pro projects, two of them are co-produced with the one in Chile, which is filmed right now, and and then one in Spain. So we have tried to find Finnish stories happening elsewhere and try to find a, uh, collaborators from there. Mm. So I think you just have to be creative to collect the money yeah. to have the budget. You talk about Netflix. How, how else are you working with them? Well, as you know, they have their good sides. Mm. It's, it's a good place to to put Finnish uh, drama in and everybody can see how wonderful we are. Yeah. But at the same time, of course, they're a competitor and, and as we know, we use the term frenemy, as it's yeah. been used here also. But I think the world is changing in that direction that you have to be, have to have partners, different mm. kind of partners and, and see what, what will come up to it yeah. at the end. And how are you working with Netflix? Um, well, we do. Um, I should say that because we don't we don't produce anything in house. Everything we do is co-produced with Swedish production companies and and financing from elsewhere. Of course, um, we do. Uh, we haven't got a, st a strategy re regarding the asphalt players. We just go sort of project by project for for now on uh, and see. Um, I d I do have uh, co-productions with um, Via Play and. We're doing a thing which is uh, with with Netflix now, uh, starting. This and well. but you get first window. We get first window. Okay. And Penilla, the same to you. It's just very interesting. Alan, you obviously can't quite answer. This. <laughs> yeah, answer. we we have um, we have uh, had um, co-production with Netflix. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and um, Rita, for example. Yeah. And uh, I mean. Mm, I, I would say politics changes all the time because it is a, a world in quite a, a quick d development, mm. and and uh, so what we've done in the past doesn't necessarily mean that's how it's no. going to work in the future. We yeah. can see that when we do have an escort service in TV two, mm. and 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 we can see that there are. If you looked over the summer, there was more viewers who had watched um, a, a crime show that was only exclusively lying on uh, tv 2 play our SWAT service, but the ones that also is on uh, Netflix was viewed by fewer. And it's not like, we can't say that that's the answer, but of course it's, it's, uh, it's something to take into consideration. Yeah. How, much, how much content can we have on other platforms? How yeah, much do definitely. we need to, to have that is kind of unique if we do want to uh, have an SWAT service? Yeah, um, and obviously with the rain dropping and going globally, it's trying to make sure that you're obviously still the first port of call for your local producers when you are fighting against them. So it is friend or foe, but I mean, I, I agree. I think it's a fantastic point of what we've done to this state isn't what we're necessarily going no, to be no. doing in the future. Mm. Absolutely I mean, It's not. incredibly fluid and we've yeah. got to figure it out as we go along. Yeah, exactly. It's a very, very different relationship. Mm. Um, as we move on, um, do you have any Nordic or UK co-pros you're particularly proud of and can share today? I haven't got any UK co-pros. I've got things in development, but nothing else. Anything that's... you could protect, potentially talk about? I don't think so. I'm sorry. No, no it's all in the future. Yeah, so it... I, 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 I've just, I came to SVT a year and a half ago, and um, everything that was has been, um, you know, or been out uh, 17, 18, 19, our returning series, um, mm. Uh, so 2020 is going to be my call, uh, which is uh, very scary, but also yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, That's so, exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. But um, so nothing, nothing yet that I can talk to. As I go along, any, anybody else got any, any partnerships with the UK producers? Is there a way? Uh, no. We have one uh, Moomin uh, series. We all know what the Moomin characters yes. are. <laughs> Animations, big uh, Finnish story. Uh, it's, it's a huge collaboration uh, with Sky in, in, in UK and, and Japan and China and, and Finland. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's going to be released uh, next spring. On Sky One? Yep. 
Oh, fantastic. I don't know about in the UK, but it's Sky. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge, uh, huge oh, operation made by a Finnish uh, company. And Penelope, anything from, from your side no, that we can No, not at the moment. Share? So, if um, Alan, anything before? Yeah, we're developing something with a UK production company, a very well known UK production company, and a really brilliant writer who I can't say who it is yet. Yes. Which is being written in the UK in English, and is, we're working with a Finnish production company who are going to make it. And this is the ongoing discussion we're having about the scripts. And we'll hopefully go into production in, in March of next year to come out end of the year. So Psychological thriller, six-parter. Writing in English yeah. should then be translated into Finnish. Yeah, but it's a kind of cooperation. So it's not like, just translate this. Okay. It's very much a two-way process between the writers in Finland and the writer in the UK. But she, the writer in the UK is leading it. And um, she's done some good stuff here. Um, for Channel 4 in particular. So okay. um, we'll be revealing probably at MIP, I guess. Hopefully, if I can get the deal over the line. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, I mean, for me, it's important to point out that uh, the things we're involved in, th there needs to be organic, you know, stories and, and talents from, from, from both territories and things. Because uh, the, the, the budget we have is really small and it's for... Uh, you know, making Swedish drama for Swedish audiences. Mm. So, um, but I'm sure there are projects that could fit into that, um, that we can work on. Uh, but I get, I think the um, amazing thing is, uh, or a very weird thing is that you, you, you get this call from, from, uh, from the US all the time, you know, people wanting to look at your development slate. Uh, and it's like, uh, no, I'm not going to show that. Uh, yeah. Why? Uh, but... <laughs> I mean, everyone's looking for money, right? And yeah. it's very important that we protect that the money we have is from Swedish license payer to make Swedish drama for Swedish audiences. Mm. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure that there is projects that will work. When you talk about the budgets in the, in the Nordics um, for the purposes of the room, the average show, how much do you normally pay for a show? Uh, well, it varies from... Or rather, not you know, do you pay, but how much is a production budget? So between about 800,000 euro to uh, yeah. nine, 950, yeah. I think. Is that, yeah. a, is that a fair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've put on my new hat about six months ago, so I've been out of the mm. Nordic game. Mm. Um, <laughs> but so compared to the UK, I mean, obviously all the producers here from the UK in the room, that's nearly coming onto half of what a show costs in the UK. Up, you know, a contemporary crime series is anything north of 1.5. Um, how are you keeping those budgets down but still delivering the quality that we're seeing on screen? Uh, I, we, sh we should say that if it does vary. I mean, the bridge mm. didn't cost, um, you know, yeah. things, That's fair some enough. things so are more expensive than, than yeah. others. Yeah. Uh, I think we're always... I mean, we have been used to... Uh, um, producing, uh, we work with smaller crews, um, of course, uh, we, we just do things very sort of um, <laughs> economical because, we, because we've had to, because we haven't had the money uh, and nobody has been, in, had been, you know, nobody was interested in the stuff. I come from the feature film industry and I mean, it's funny for us uh, that come from that side to listen to this, you know, uh, co-production is the new thing. It's like, Co-production has been, we've been co-producing with everyone. Forever, all forever. The time, forever. <laughs> Otherwise, we couldn't have made anything yeah. because we haven't had the money. Yeah. So not having the money makes you sort of clever, I suppose, uh, in a way. Do you agree, Fiona? You're yeah, nodding. Yeah, I agree. Actually, those budgets that you mentioned in, in Finland, they are huge. Mm. Yeah. Five, five years ago. Yeah, I should, I should, five, I should five caveat year. that that's a Swedish budget. Or yeah, a but thing. We've, been, yeah. we've been doubling, tripling the budgets mm. and mm. been able to do that. But, of course, there are not so many famous people and actors and so and directors in Finland. Mm. Not yet. <laughs> so it's... Yeah. It's going to be rising. Yeah. It's all there was a couple of um, questions came in via the app earlier. One, if you are a UK producer sitting in the audience right now and they want to pitch to you, how would you receive that? It's the best way. And now, noting that it is an authentically Nordic story or there is mm -hmm. a flavour, that's a caveat straight away. 
Alan, coming to you after your speed meetings yesterday. Well, well it's yeah. funny you said that because the, 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 the thing I was just talking about came as somebody just came to meet me here in the UK and pitched me. It was basically a couple of lines almost. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just love where you started from. Can we just open that envelope a bit further? Mm. And it felt like a Finnish, like a Nordic type idea, you know, in terms of, you know, we're all living in a global village. Of course, there are different things going on, but in terms of the universal themes of family and, you know, the, the big themes were in this idea. So it was very simple. We were just like, let's open up the idea and let's move further and let's see how, how we can house this. Mm. So of course they can pitch to us. I don't see any problem. With, I don't actually see any problem with that. Yeah. Of course we embrace Finnish talent and Finnish writers and Finnish producers and directors. But if, an, if it's a good idea, it's a good idea for me mm. personally. And we, we will then see how best we can house that idea. And if we want to do it and can we do it yeah. and who's the best people to do it with. Mm. So that's how that idea opened up. Mm. And then we said, how can we best explore it? So. You know, drop it in the mail. <laughs> Did they have to partner with a Finnish company? Uh, or is that... I think it would make it much more difficult not to. Like the, yeah. the cost, like you say, the cost in Finland, um, almost half the cost we're talking about here for Sweden. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah the, for this particular production, it is with a Finnish production company. They are making it. Mm. It's you know, Finnish actors, Finnish director, Finnish producers. It's, it's Finnish. Okay. Um, but the idea can be sourced from somewhere else. And, and, you know, someone came to me, in fact, you came to me with a producer, shall I just say, I sure who did. had a book and had a Finnish outline, yeah. a Nordic outline. And you said, could this work? And the producer was English. Yeah. So, you know, it could have worked. It was set in the Finland. I sound like I pimp people out the way you, you said that. Yeah. <laughs> You pretty much are. You pretty much are, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, one key question, as Anna mentioned, is, of course, that we are public service companies. Yes. So it has to be some kind of a Finnish story. Yes. for the Finnish audience who's paying for it. Mm. We have had some uh, scripts that are happening in London. One of the characters is half Finnish. Some words are speaking, spoken in, in Finnish, but this is not the Finnish story. Why, yes. why should we be part of this? It has to have the Finnish sensibility. Yes, yeah. for the Finnish audience who's paying. It has to be relevant for the yeah. audience. Yeah. Penilla, for you, in Denmark, I mean, how, how would somebody bring an idea to you if they were in a UK production company and had a a, a Danish they they would idea. Um, if it's in English they will email me <laughs> with yeah. an idea and I would read it and when and if and, and and as I agree totally the main thing is is the story right yeah um, and and we're the same we make stories for the Danes mainly right of course that's our I mean it's important for us to make TV2 as a channel where all it Danes can see something that they that they can relate to yeah. But I mean, I, I think we're quite lucky in, in Denmark and maybe even in Scandinavia. We do have an audience that, of course, they want to be uh, entertained, but they also kind of want to be challenged, which is maybe not the same in all other countries. Yeah. And that has to do about the tradition, especially from DR, mm. uh, of Absolutely. bringing really, really good drama to the Danes. Mm. So they are quite, um, yeah, they're, they're a great audience to, uh, to feed into. I can see the card showing that I have two minutes and I want to ask um, my final question, which is um, what is the show that everybody we should be looking out for in 2019? <laughs> we, we are a room of, we like to be informed, everybody right. likes to know. So what's uh, the show they should look out for? Second season of Before We Die. First season start, was amazing. Start so shooting in two weeks. Okay. It's great. It's, it's amazing. Excellent. Vila, from Our great Chilean project, Invisible Heroes. Uh, hero story for Finnish diplomats who saved lives in Chile, 1973. True story. True story. Fantastic. Okay. Nila, from your side. Well, it would either be um, a Warrior, which is like a miniseries in um, six parts, or uh, the clip you also saw, A Fortunate Man. Okay. And we've seen bullets, but... Next, we've got a series called The Fist coming out. The Fist. <laughs> yeah, which is... Uh, which is Alan, uh, you always have to land a finish on something, yeah, something great. Yeah, something too. strong. Uh, it's uh, uh, an espionage thriller set in the, set in the 50s, Helsinki. Yeah. The However, fist. I also want to say I really want to see your series, White Wall. That yeah. you're doing yeah. the Can I episode. also say I also want to see your series White Wall <laughs> and Not Bitter and Twisted that you went with some very deep thanks for that show. Right, I'm going to say thank you very much indeed to my panellists, also in partnership with Connected. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank you very much for joining us today and an applause for my panellists. <laughs>